I'm Noah Grin, and I'm here on behalf of Customer Labs, who are talking with a bunch of different marketers from scale-up startups and companies that have experienced growth within a short span of time. We're talking to different companies like yourself, and I'll introduce you in a moment, as we want to be able to document and share the lessons between the different MarTech stacks and uncover the data through looking at customers' journeys and seeing their evolution. So today I'm here with Nick Dunst and I am very excited to have you here. Thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Great to be here. Cool. So Nick, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from the UK. From the UK. Yeah. And you're from a company called Shuttle. Yeah, Shuttle. Awesome. And I'll let you just for a moment just tell everyone a little bit about Shuttle. Okay, so Shuttle, um, we've actually recently rebranded, mm -hmm. and uh, so we call ourselves Shuttle Global Payment Logistics. We work with SaaS companies who need to enable payments within their platform. So they've probably got lots of customers needing lots of different mm -hmm. payment providers around the world, and they can do that through us with one API and have all their payment data in one place. So making it really easy and simple for them to, to get that capability. That's fantastic, and you're their chief marketing <coughs> officer, so in charge of <laughs> the whole data-led process and the MarTech stacks and everything in between. <laughs> Something like that, definitely everything in between. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Right, question number one. Do you remember the first change you made to your MarTech stack and why? Okay, so do you remember the first change you made to your MarTech stack and why you made that change? I do, yeah. So we made rather a fundamental change. Um, so we, we swapped out our CRM. Mm -hmm. um, it was relatively early days <clears throat> for us, but we made that change because mm -hmm. the CRM platform that we were using was a bit of a jack of all trades. Yeah. And I needed a bit of a, um, a broader stack and a more of a specialist CRM tool in that. And, I, and I, I'd had some issues with that CRM provider actually. Um, so I wanted a, um, I wanted a more robust solution like a, at the heart of our, tool. Yeah. Yeah, at, the, at the heart of it all. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what was the most, I guess, the, this, is a, this is an interesting one. I want to know what was the most important criteria that you had in mind when you were choosing new technology for the yeah. stack? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and I think my view has changed over the years, actually. Mm. Um, so nowadays, because we needed a broader stack, we actually needed... The, the point of integration. Yeah. So when I'm looking at um, some software or some capability, I'm looking at how it can integrate into our stack. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of number one. And then next to that, I'm looking at <clears throat> broadly how how quickly can I get going? How, how intuitive is that software? Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, I'm looking at that robustness. Does it feel like I'm driving around in a Prius? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comparison, that's, that's so important. The robustness is so crucial to yeah. ensure that it can actually scale with you within yeah. your next yeah, yeah. element that you're gonna add to your stack. So another thing that I wanna talk about to be able to share these lessons with these marketers is what do you feel marketers, marketers should anticipate when scaling their marketing stack? Yeah, so there's a, there is a lot of choice out there in the market and um, I, I'm looking for something that can work well with who we are as an organization mm -hmm. but also fulfill a quite you know, functional need within the stack. I think you'll get tools that are really specific about what they do and then you'll yeah. get tools that are really, you know, um, they're sort of jack of all trades or they can do lots of different things. So I think you need to be really specific about what it is that you're looking for and actually anticipate um, what the, the pros and cons are of a tool that can do everything um, versus a tool that can do something really specific within your within your stack and then decide which which way you want to go. Do you yeah. want more tools um, with more specific functionality or less tools perhaps with a broader set of features? Yeah. Um, and for us, like, <clears throat> we wanted to anticipate, well, we, we've put in some well-known brand names mm -hmm. and that was a learning curve quite early on that we figured out because we, we were optimistic about our growth. So yeah. we wanted a tool that could handle the growth, but also handle the kind of um, interoperability that we needed and the kind of communications that we wanted to do. So, I mean, that's what you've got to anticipate. What's your, what's, how are you going to scale? Mm. What kind of 
what kind of communications do you want to do? What, what, how do you want to pass data around? Uh, and yeah. Do you want specific tools to do specific things or, or a broader tool set? Yeah, and it's all about, as you, as you touched on this, that robust ability <coughs> to infatuate that you're, you will scale inevitably. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do. So when you're scaling, I think it's so crucial to not take the tool on the first tier which doesn't have the functionality because then you have to then strive to adopt something later down the line which you may, if you would have adopted earlier, it would have been easier down that line. I think this leads into another good question. So what marketing and sales technologies are you currently using at Shuttle Global? Yeah. Um, so we're using a few. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're, I guess we're covering off the base, you know, most of the functions of your average SaaS company. Mm -hmm. um, so around, you know, customer success and service, um, we're using Intercom, um, we're using HubSpot. Mm. We're using, we use HubSpot just as a CRM. Um, we use Intercom for like product tours as well as chat. Um, and both that's kind of on the, on the marketing website and within yeah. our product. Um, we actually, we actually use, um, uh, I suppose you could say we use Slack as well as part of our onboarding, which oh, is really? kind of, cool. just kind of part of our customer set success slash marketing efforts as well. Um, and we use um, we use a tool called Lemlist, which is uh, effectively a an emailer. Yeah, um, Gillian, I mean, we, Gillian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, it's it's that's that's at a really good price point with some yeah. with some robust functionality as well. Um, and it, and it's nice and simple that tool. Mm -hmm. So um, we chose not to use HubSpot for that element of the product of the of the, our need. Um, we use we use Hootsuite. Yeah. We use. Um, uh, we use something called Phantom Buster for some of the automation, mm -hmm. and then we use um, we use some Google products, obviously, but uh, we use something called Airtable as well to try and bring some of the data together, together. where we've got some more manual processes going on. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, iron out those in due yeah, course. Yeah, in due course, and yeah. that's the key when in scaling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, definitely, we'll touch on that in a moment. <laughs> so, um, it's really interesting. So, I want to talk more about. What are some of the what are some of the latest channels and formats that that've worked best for you as a company? Yeah, so we're relatively early stage in terms of our efforts, mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of really just getting going with some of our inbound activities and, yes. and work as well. So um, yeah, we've been trying out some channels, um, so direct channels like email and so forth, uh -huh. and, and and LinkedIn uh, and. I'm not sure of the percentages, but I, I, I think that LinkedIn is potentially twice as effective for us as, as email has been. Mm -hmm. we, we've had really good email open rates and things like that, but um, LinkedIn has worked better for our world. Do you start with amalgamating uh, in list and then taking it to email and then moving to, towards LinkedIn, or what's the flow there? It depends. Yeah. We've kind of experimented around mm -hmm. with it, and there's different advice out there um, of, of what order you do things in and, and stuff. But um, broadly, we were able to get in, in touch with more people through LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just about building your network and, and yeah. actually you know, starting a conversation in that space, um, which is kind of easier and more natural on LinkedIn than perhaps on email. Yeah, it's um, a different formality. Yeah, yeah. So that's been useful. Um, and then... We've yeah we've created content um, and we've, we're beginning to look at part you know, some partners to create mm -hmm. some content. So yeah. almost like coming together with a dual yeah. um, uh, value proposition almost, yeah. and then and go out and, and answer a, answer a, answer a challenge that's in the market. Um, but to to do that with someone else kind of just really adds a bit of weight to what you've got to say. Mm -hmm. But it also just inherently has that collaboration about it. Um, I, you know, we haven't got many results from that, but I, I'm pretty excited about what that could look like. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. So we'll definitely get everyone to check in and see how that's going and <laughs> look at your content yeah, eventually. Keep me accountable. Keep me accountable. <laughs> awesome. So this leads into another one. So how far does your platform and data unification play a role in the personalization of your experiments that you're currently doing or wanting to do moving into this year? Yeah, it's interesting um, because if you're if you're working into a market of any size, uh, of a decent size, yeah. actually, you know, personalization is going to, going to 
become more challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've we have experimented with going wide and, yeah. and less personalized. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and at the ma- at the main we're we're concentrated on a on a particular couple of markets where where actually personalization is is really helpful. But of course, we've got the challenge of how we pull that personalization together. Mm. Um, and I've seen certain, you know, like cadences or sequences where it gets a little bit creepy in terms of the personalization. <laughs> it can get personal. <laughs> it can get it can get personal pretty quickly. But and I think that's the trick. I think it's um, I think it's yeah. So we're we're trying to work out what we put into Intercom or HubSpot or even Airtable and mm-hmm. how we how we begin to amalgamate that data and that those yeah. processes so it's a lot more efficient for us um, but also we can quickly just find that you know that source of truth where where is the information about this person um, and how is it best personalized and how can we automate some of that yeah um, and where's it driven from and you know that's awesome and then you can then take that a step further and then relay that to your sales reps and enable them to dictate what and direction they need to take based on this particular account. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we yeah we get a little bit of feedback um, from what people are, you know, looking at on our site or, or what um, what they've even read or what email sequences have worked mm. better for them or what they've clicked on. So we are trying to roll that back in and then act off the back of it. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So we yeah really seeing a rampant adoption of the CDPs <laughs> being used by a ton of different SaaS companies across the whole sector at the moment, and I wanted to ask maybe if you're if you're not what's in your stack in terms of CDPs or yeah. when you're planning to adopt a stack like to have a CDP within your stack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does the audience know what a CDP is? Yeah, yeah, they do. They're very versed. But if you want, you can, you can, well, you can explain it. Or I can explain it. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're pretty elementary. Yeah. In that respect, um, it, it's something. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that the concept is something that I've known about for a long time and actually mm-hmm. worked on in other other businesses. But um, yeah, we don't have necessarily a tool that does that. Um, we're trying to. We're trying to figure out where is the best place to unify things and how we do that best, um, how we build those connections. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think that's why we're effectively using Airtable at the minute <laughs> to <laughs> do that cool. in a more There's semi-automated a... manual process. Yeah, um, and that, that's fantastic to see because that's really like embodying, embodying that growth-centric yeah. ability to use something like that because you need and you have it and that's what you're using it for. So yeah. I'd love to hear... How are you currently using Airtable to act as a CDP? Yeah, so um, well, we we fire data into that um, either manually or not, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I guess it's I guess it's because we're learning and we're experimenting. It, it's a quick way to effectively add new fields of data. Yeah, um, and we're finding out what fields of data are relevant. Uh, what you know, e- even for personalization or so forth. And then what we'll do is we'll go back and build some of those fields back into either Intercom or HubSpot. Yeah, and um, attribute them as fields within at, those leads. <clears throat> yeah, attribute them as fields. So you know, if someone's working on I, even even a customer or even a e, even a prospect or a lead, they can actually that data centralized somewhere mm-hmm. where they can access it and hopefully see um, a little bit more intelligence yes, about yeah. about a lead or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, it's a bit of a manual process at the minute, <clears throat> um, and we don't we don't want to. You know, I've worked on CRMs uh, before where you end up with just some behemoth, and it's mm. like the data's no good for anyone. Yeah, and it's, you know, you can have too much information. You you can. you it's it's also it's worth keeping it clean to ensure that you can scale and then taking on because I'm seeing people that can have multiple fields. You could have sixteen fields, and how can you possibly start to? Yeah keep that and consider that when you're outreaching and taking that all into account. There's so many different items to collect. It's a pain to be able to get your more junior reps to be able to correlate that information yeah. and then work that into whatever yeah. you use and what choices you need to yeah. make there. So I think this is another good one. So how do you see your marketing team benefit from customer intelligence and having marketing analytics within one place? Yeah, well, firstly, it saves a lot of time. And it's yeah. efficient, and it's hopefully, <clears throat> if it's wrong, it's wrong everywhere. <laughs> hopefully, but hopefully it's true, and it's in it's in one place. 
Um, so yeah, it's 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 one place to look. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we're trying to get there. Uh, it's funny how quickly, even as a small, a small, relatively small business, you, things can get out of whack. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the goal. How, so, and how would you see other <laughs> marketing teams benefiting from that? From that side again, unifying everything. Uh, other teams and other companies. Yeah, yeah. How would you see that if we take this out and we think about the other marketing teams within SaaS? How do you feel they would benefit from this? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, if they if if your data and your your view is in one place, you're much more likely to get an insight um, or get an understanding of a, a, a prospect or a lead or even mm -hmm. a customer much more easily. And, and and that's the thing I would say. That's probably the biggest value add for me right now. It's it's being able to look at someone and almost like humanize them because you've yeah. got much more of their attributes in one place. Mm -hmm. it, fe it feels much more real so that you can have, when you go and have a conversation, even if it's relatively cold because it might be a, a different team member, um, it can be much more informed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you can get some insights into, through that customer's behavior or that, that lead's behavior um, of how you might want to actually uh, engage them or mm. engage them differently in the future or whatever. That's, that's really interesting. And as at the moment you're saying, you're predominantly an outbound driven with yeah. your initiatives as a company moving forward. So. To be able to have that is so powerful yeah. and then taking that inbound to be able to enter people into the funnel and understand and sort of profile them dependent on the content they interact with as they trickle down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like any company, we want to know if we've got a repeat prospect or lead yeah. coming, coming yeah. to our at least our site or some of our channels. Of course. Um, so we want to engage with them in the, in the right kind of way. I think that leads into another good question. <laughs> it's an interesting one. So I'd love to know what insights or advice you would give other individuals and marketers that are looking to get into adding the CDP and getting into the world of CDP. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think set it up as a goal. Mm -hmm. That's definitely what you what you should be doing. Uh, and 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 what we're doing, rightly or wrongly, is experimenting about. Um, that you know the connecting pieces uh, and where we put the data and what tool set what tooling we have um, yeah and, and maybe my advice is maybe you can just segment off some activities and try some different tooling yeah. around that and see what works and then roll it back into the bigger stack if, it, if it's working um, but don't don't be afraid of that. But yeah, but, and but just do what you got to do. Just do what to you got to do. Work, yeah, right? yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And then scale up. So yeah, then you scale. can take on the yeah. big tools within CDP and make it work in your favor. Yeah. But if you have to start at Airtable, you got to do what you got to do to yeah. collect the fields. Yeah. And yeah. that's really interesting to see you collecting those fields outside of your CRM and then not having everything housed within those particular fields within each lead. Because um, a lot of people correlate the information within the CRM and then you have all of the fields attributed to that. But then taking that, it gives another factor of information so you can collect even more and have to not use all of those fields within your CRM. Yeah. So exclusively, you can accumulate more information and it doesn't need to plug up and clog up you really in those different leads. So that's yeah, cool. Ab absolutely, yeah. It's a good source of truth. So, so what are your predictions on the role of AI and machine learning in scaling personalized customer communication <laughs> moving into this year? Yeah, you know, sometimes I, I almost think like AI and machine learning are almost like a paradox to personalization, yeah. you know? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, uh, we're beginning to utilize what we can in the most basic form where we might in one of our in one of our email campaigns, we might use a customized image mm. um, for a particular prospect. You can um, with Lemlist. Yeah, 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 you can do that kind of thing with Lemlist or, or whatever. But mm. um, I think I think I think I really hope that personalization and, and machine learning in, in terms of the Martech stack will really enable an authentic communication mm -hmm. and engagement. Like that's yeah. what we've got to get to. We've got to we've got to work out how can it not only drive efficiency on mm -hmm. scale, but actually you know, drive that authenticity as well. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't rule out the kind of manual effort, but to set up that authenticity. Yeah. So but it it's about learning you. what is authentic mm. to me, maybe as an individual marketer or sales rep or yeah. customer success person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the key. I'd love to see how <clears throat> how it can learn my 
almost my style. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the fantastic. company's DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing. A company's DNA. Yeah. If it can understand that through the cohesive data, yeah. then it can then help you in such a significant yeah. way to personalize yeah. your communications. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think this is this is a good one to wrap up on. So key metrics according to you that SaaS marketers should track across the customer journey from speaking about acquisition and retention to understand their customers better. What do you feel are those key metrics? So across prospects or? So through the customer journey, when yeah. looking at acquisition and retention, <coughs> yeah. what key metrics do you think they should be tracking to ensure that their customers have that better acquisition and I guess they're retained? Yeah, yeah, well I think I think the thing is, <clears throat> what I'm really interested in at the moment is engagement. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to work out what, what does engagement really look like? Yes. What, is, what is a positive engagement? And um, even, even if it's a negative engagement, am I counting that towards actually um, the success of a customer? Yes. Because yes. often it can be, even, even if someone has an issue through that customer journey, that helps retention. You know, it's about how you went about solving their challenge, mm -hmm. or even, you know, um, making them feel comfortable with with how how they can solve it themselves, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to. I'd love. Oh, I think this is one out there for the audience. So I don't necessarily <laughs> think, know the answer, but I'd love to see how we can we can actually track more engagement metrics. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And not be too binary about it, mm -hmm. like because you can't always attract attribute engagement to to churn or to upsell. Yeah. But but I'd love to begin to see what we could do there. So yeah, more engagement metrics would be great and I'd love to see some tools about how we could do that. Um, put it out there into the world. <laughs> put it out there, I'm just gonna put that out there and then <laughs> please ring me on a postcard or whatever. Uh, chat on, online. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so engagement metrics, big, big topic. Love to see more yeah. about that. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I probably could just leave it there because every, I guess the audience is pretty savvy, so they probably know a lot of the other metrics that I yeah. could mention right now. Um, but, but yeah, I'm super interested in, in, in what engagement means for us uh -huh. as a business and how that, how that then results in positive um, outcomes for our customers. That's awesome, and it's not always binary, so therefore, if you can break that down into those key areas, putting that onto the world, someone break that down, yeah. it will happen. Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> you get a lot of like account-based and brands marketing at the minute, because yeah. cause we're oversaturated with um, other types of more direct sales, mm -hmm. uh, um, but they're really hard to attribute sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's, I think there are intelligent things that we can do and yeah. actually track through to sale, retention, yeah. upsell, etc. And it will really help with that retention yeah. factor. It's yeah, so absolutely. crucial. Yeah. So it's, it's about understanding your customers yeah. more. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you. And thank you for watching, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Clap again.